You were canceled in 2018, is that right? I think it was then, yeah. And yeah, it was. Yeah. You talk about how you're you talk to other comics who have also been canceled. Yeah. And y'all have a pact with each other to say we're going to be even more offensive when we come back. Yeah. Why yeah. is that? What do you, well, because what is your we plan? have to be more offensive when we come back because we can't be beaten down. We can't let them kill comedy. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here and Roseanne Barr, who is somehow still getting booked on Fox News interviews, just gave the whole game away. For her, comedy means saying whatever you want without consequences. But there's a catch. You say what you want to say to who wants to hear it. You know, stand-up is a great place to come back and... Um, say what happened and tell the truth about it and also to talk about cancel culture itself and how horrible it is and how fascist and it, jokes are a great great way to uh you know s scorn power to, especially during biden's presidency i i love laughing it to scorn because it, it deserves to be sco laughed to scorn oh, I agree and, and my jokes are so great they're the most offensive i was talking to my friends who also we're canceled, and we all were saying we made a pact together. When we come back, we're going to be even more offensive than we've ever been before. So my stand-up is more offensive than I've ever been. Comedy is used to break down social barriers and highlight social norms, and it has been that way for a long time. But the right has approached comedy in the last few years as a way to express their more racist and homophobic tendencies. Just as a few years ago, some things were okay in a comedic sense. They aren't now, because comedy is also supposed to evolve with social norms, not try to take us back 50 years. But the right would have us do that, except Roseanne got a little confused in this interview. We can't let you know, these people who are censors and book burners have the last say over comedy. We have to protect comedy. It's the last free speech art form. It's the major free speech art form. And it's where you can, it's the last place you can get up and say what you want to say to the people who want to hear it. To, to laugh power to scorn is the most powerful thing you can do. And we need to do that right now, I think, because everything's so ridiculous. It's hard to write a joke now since everything's so absurd and ridiculous. Do you ever it's take hard a to write a joke about it? Do you ever pause it? and say, maybe I shouldn't say this? Or do you just say, yeah. if I have that thought, let me just go with it? Yeah, I took a long pause, like years, right. to go, I, I'm afraid mm -hmm. to say anything in, in this climate. And I think... Everybody is, but then I'm like, hell, I'm 70 years old. When am I going to get another chance to um, get out there and say, hey, guys, we got to fight against this censorship and this crazy stuff that that uh, is anti-American. She said that those that are censoring books are the ones that are anti-American, and I agree with her on that, which I think is where she meant to argue that it is the left that is banning and burning books. But that ain't the case, is it? The latest round of information on banned books came straight out of Ron DeSantis' estate, and he says he's one of those freedom-loving Americans that just has to stand up for the First Amendment, except for the banning books part. You've got to be more offensive when the culture is so offensive that it makes absolutely no sense that it's anti-life, anti-human, anti-culture, anti-citizen. you got to be so offensive to offend the most offensive thing that it is on earth right now. And I think I've done it. You have? <laughs> That's a very high bar. Roseanne's obsession with the right-wing version of cancel culture comes from a place that a lot of right-wing comedians seem to have came bubbling up to the surface in the last few years. Yes, if you tweet conspiracy theories and feed into anti-Semitic narratives, you may get called out on it. You may lose your job if you put your racism on full display for the world. You may even ruin the image of a long-running television program because you decided to say something horrible online instead of just keeping it to yourself. But again, the right wing's version of cancel culture only applies if it's a racist remark or an attempted coup. The left could make a typo and the right would try to, quote, cancel them. And better yet, their favorite tactic of calling someone a socialist or spreading conspiracy theories about that person without having to be held accountable for lying on national television. All that works pretty well into the right's idea of reality. 
People like those at Fox News do not want to be held to the same standard, or really any standard they set for anyone in the political realm. Remember the White House dinner where Sarah Huckabee Sanders got called out on being a professional liar for Donald Trump, and the right wing did the mental gymnastics that only they can do, and somehow turned it into sexism. They missed the irony of the defense they were basically making for the administration of the most sexist person they could have ever decided to, and that was Donald Trump. So the lesson here, folks, is that if that someone on your right claims that they're being canceled, then you can bet that they will coast on their social reprimands until the end of time and contribute to an even more horrible discourse. And that's a fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.